Good morning, everyone. My name is John Newstreet, President and CEO of your Kissimmee Osceola County Chamber of Commerce, and we're delighted to bring you a second webinar uh, related to resources available to you in our community. As champions for business and community, last week we focused on the business side of that mission statement to highlight the new uh, financial resources available to you uh, from the Congressional Stimulus Package 3. And that is still available, archived for you to review. Uh, but this week we wanted to focus on the community side of that commission, that uh, mission statement. And so we are privileged to um, have as our guest today, Reverend Mary Downey. Uh, Reverend Downey is the Central Floridian of the Year here in our community and all communities in Central Florida. So uh, she's truly a special person as recognized uh, throughout. And we're privileged to, to call her a partner and a friend. And so she's going to be talking about resources available for folks here uh, that may be facing hardships in our community. Again, the workforce uh, that, that feeds our businesses comes from the community, and we want you all to be happy and healthy and safe uh, and profitable. And so you can put the bread on your family's table and provide um, the future that we all desire. And so if we'll bring Mary up now for a uh, further introduction of herself, and then she's going to steal the show and give you uh, quite a bit of information about resources here in Osceola County. Good morning, Mary. Good morning. Thank you so much for having me. Yes, ma'am. So uh, I, I gave a quick introduction you probably heard, and, and we've talked in advance of this. So congratulations, first and foremost, as being Central Florida in the Year here in Thank our you. community. That's awesome and well-deserved. So. Um, along those lines, uh, you provide services through Community Hope Center, and so you might give a quick background about your services and, and functionality there, and then uh, lead into the resources available for uh, folks in the community, not just through Community Hope Center, but what's available all around. Absolutely, and I would uh, ask if uh, Christina is kind of backstage for us, helping us out. We're so thankful for her and her great leadership at the chamber. If she would go ahead and bring up our slides, uh, we'll go ahead and get started this morning. So I am the CEO and founder of the Community Hope Center. Um, and what we basically do as an organization is we help people in our community community identify the barriers that they have that they might be facing that kind of keeps them in poverty. And so those barriers include lots of things. It includes lack of housing support, lack of employment support, um, educational resources. And so as we look at um, what's happening in our community and we look at our future, um, you know, we are an organization committed to providing services to all those in need in Central Florida. Our family advocates work with those folks and, and, and help them reach their goals. We partner with over 60 agencies. We also run the iDignity Osceola program. And so we are definitely um, experiencing a lot of changes in how we provide services on during this time of the pandemic and then afterwards. And so uh, if we go ahead and advance to the next slide, I'll talk a little bit about what we've had to do just to kind of make sure that we're following everything that's happening for social distancing and the stay at home mandates. Um, our, our advocates are all working remotely. So those who are working with people who are already clients with us, already doing the self-determined success program that we have, they're still keeping up with those folks. They're still working with them. They're still providing care to those folks uh, either by phone or online. But um, as we got more and more information about what what it meant to social distance and stay away, we didn't want the Hope Center to be a place where people were constantly congregating. And so we, we began by transitioning our operations to just a Monday, Wednesday, Friday. And then as the stay at home order was issued, we went ahead and uh, just were opening one day a week at this point on Wednesdays from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. where um, we have a few folks who are coming in and helping people uh, get um, their mail. We are a mail pickup site for a lot of people who are homeless or in poverty, as well as food assistance. And we're very thankful because we have uh, been one of the food pantries among many in our community who have been supported by the county to keep our food pantry doors open. And so uh, today, starting in just about 30 minutes, we anticipate that a lot of people are going to be coming through our doors. And if we advance to the next slide, I'll let you know kind of what that's looked like the last three 
or four weeks. Um, so in um, in just our response and what's happened. So in the last three or four weeks from March 16th through April 5th, uh, we've served over a thousand heartbeats. We normally serve about 600 heartbeats a month. And so as you can see, uh, we serve 90% of our average monthly heartbeats in seven days. Uh, that's 414 people through the door as well as case management, other people in their household. Uh, 296 of those people so far have received food assistance. Uh, and again, that was in very, very limited amount of services. So it's a 244% increase of services since COVID-19 began. If we wanna go ahead and go to the next slide. I'll talk a little bit about what people are asking for and what it looks like when people come in through the door. Um, and this is in response to uh, the stimulus three package that came through the Families First Act and our clients. Uh, so this is kind of the part of the conversation where I want to talk about what we're telling people that's available in the community for them right now. And so some of this may be new information to some of you. Some of this may be um, uh, a refresher, but I want to make sure that you know for the people that work for you or for those who may be watching who are still confused about what this looks like, for the people that we serve, some of the things that we pulled out of that stimulus package that we felt was very important um, is the um, is is the portion around uh, the sick leave and FMLA. So right now under the Families First Act, there is two weeks of 100% paid leave uh, if you're diagnosed with COVID-19. There's also two weeks of paid leave at a 60% pay if you're taking care of someone who is diagnosed with COVID-19 or a child who can't go to daycare or school because of it. Finally, there is an FMLA expansion to include three months of coverage if you have to take care of a child because of daycare closure. <coughs> Excuse me. If you want to go on to the next slide, Christina. Excuse me. The CARES Act also has increased funding for SNAP. This does not include individual benefits, but it does help those who are um, going to be applying into the system. We also saw an increased funding for emergency service grants, as well as increased funding for community development grants. And I do apologize, I have a little bit of a cold, so all the talking is making it a little difficult. So John, if you wanna pop in with any questions you may have, uh, to give me a second, that'd be awesome. Absolutely, uh, and so uh, we're practicing social distancing for all those watchers, and uh, it is not COVID, but you know, certainly we wish you back to uh, wellness um, but while you, while you gather your breath, I'll just remind the group uh, that um, this is Facebook Live, and so you are able to post questions as we talk, and we will do our best to address those questions. Uh, we are monitoring that through a live comment feed, so uh, feel free to type that question in on the side. Uh, you'll see Chairman of the, the Chamber, Adriana Sekula, already recognized Mary Downey as uh, the Central Florida of the Year. And so um, if you have questions, we want to hear those, and we'll address those before the end of the show. Um, also, this won't be too long of a of a uh, live stream, so stay with us. You know, it should be well under 30 minutes as we get through this, and um, so stay with us all the way through and post those questions. Mary, you get a chance to take it back. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. I, I it's allergies, and I do appreciate that. You know that everybody is kind of going through this as well as everything else. But I'm fine. Just a little bit of a cold. So I do want to make sure that you see that there is increased increased funding for emergency services grant. Um, currently in round one, our community doesn't look to be slated to receive any funds there. But we are slated to receive some funds in the community development block grants for both Kissimmee and Osceola. And you can see those funds are about a half a million to a million dollars that we have. Let's go on to the next slide. So the other thing that's really important for the people that we serve is, of course, the stimulus funds that are coming to individuals. And so as you can see here, those are the numbers that we've been seeing around the 1,200, the 500 for each child, and the 2,400 for jointly and married under 150,000. And let's go on to the next slide and talk about 
uh, some of the things around that, the limitations on that stimulus check that we're seeing. So a couple of things that you need to know is college age dependents and high school seniors are not able to count for that $500. It also includes that everyone must have a social security number. So if you have someone in your house who is undocumented, they will not get a stimulus check. Um, if someone is receiving SSI, they do not need to file a tax return. Um, a lot of people that we serve are on SSI, so there's been a lot of confusion there. But if you aren't on SSI, but you've had been very low income and you haven't been filing a tax return, you must submit a simple return in order to receive the stimulus. So that's very important to a lot of people who maybe have been in that very, very low bracket. Let's move on to the next slide and talk a little bit about unemployment. So unemployment, just to let you know for us, about 72% of those coming into the center have said they have lost their job due to COVID. Excuse me. So we wanna let them know that there is an additional $600 benefit in the stimulus package. Um, and let's go on to, to one more thing as we're talking. And I'm going to mute myself for a quick cough. Thanks. Uh, let's go on to the next slide and talk a little bit about evictions. This is the main thing that people are calling us about at the Hope Center. They are scared that they are going to be evicted. And so there are some provisions in the CARES Act that helps with that. Um, there is a moratorium on public housing, Section 8 housing, um, the HAPA grant, as well as McKinney-Vento programs and low-income housing tax credit pro properties all have opportunities for a stay, um, as well as Governor DeSantis. DeSantis also suspended evictions and foreclosures in our community for 45 days. Um, one thing that we should know and that everyone should know is a big part of our population are those who stay in hotels and hotels are largely excluded from this eviction protection. And so that has been one of the things that we've been working through and trying to, to figure out, you know, how we can help families who are who maybe are not able to pay their bills, uh, who are especially hotel families and just encouraging them to increase their benefits in other places. Look at that snap, make sure that they've got everything ready to go for that stimulus, make sure that they have everything that they need so that they can continue to pay that hotel bill if needed. Um, we also want to let them know like the same when it comes to um, when it comes to evictions, um, we want people to be reminded, uh, especially people that we serve, that even though evictions are stalled right now and utilities are still being paid, that we still have to make sure that uh, you pay as much as you can because there will be an end to this. We may not know when that end is, but we do know that there will be an end. And I know that our community is not prepared to, to make up payments of three to four to $5,000 for people who may have gotten behind. So if you can pay anything towards those rent and utilities, Utilities. We encourage you to do that. We encourage our clients to, to, again, apply for that stimulus check. Make sure that you've increased your SNAP benefits if possible. Um, if you've never applied for SNAP before, you know, that's something I, I kind of skimmed over because I was, I was coughing a little bit there. But I do want to reiterate that um, the SNAP benefits for a lot of people, they've never applied for them before uh, because maybe they just didn't think that they needed them. But in this space, this might be the time to go ahead and do that and, and be okay with the fact that there was there were additional dollars given out into the community around that. Um, just a quick couple of things I see. Uh, someone's asking if we could get a copy of this presentation. I'm sure uh, we'd be happy to send it out to you. Um, and then with that, uh, let's open it up to any other questions that John, you may have or anybody else on Facebook. Thank you guys. Yes, thank you, Mary. Uh, as a recap, this will be posted and archived both on our Facebook thread at the channel as on our YouTube channel. Um, if you'd like a separate guides with Mary's permission, we'll be happy to send those to you direct. Um, I would also encourage you to reach our to follow our research page, which is at kissimmeechamber.com. It's dedicated to the COVID-19 crisis um, and it's updated regularly. So very current factual information for you. Uh, including the information you saw today. Uh, so re re reach the resource page at KissimmeeChamber.com. Mary, um, can you talk quickly about um, Amazon Smiles and perhaps why that's of better benefit to you? Yeah, I'm sorry. I did not mention, I kind of 
how people can help us and other wonderful nonprofits in our community. Everybody in Osceola County, City of Kissimmee, are just doing a phenomenal job of, of using all the resources that they can to help those in need. You know, we did a, a collaborative food pantry a few weeks back and over a thousand families showed up. Um, and we, we really wish that we had had enough food to feed everybody in the community. But when the food ran out, it ran out. And so um, that has been a struggle for us. It's been a struggle to make sure that we have enough resources all across those things. And so um, we want to let you know that if you want to donate directly to the Hope Center, there is the Amazon small wish list. It's right there in our presentation. And I think uh, they'll also be putting it on, on the site as well. Uh, that's where you can just go right ahead and click that button. Everything that we need for our food pantry is listed there with Amazon Fresh and it just gets shipped right to us. Uh, we're doing that because we are on a very limited staff and so it's very difficult for us to sort through donations as they come through the door. Um, the other way that you can help us get food into our pantry or support our families is, is to give online, is to give through our website. Um, and we have, to, um, we have to purchase the food, the additional food that comes into the community through um, our partnership with Second Harvest. And so we use those funds to help us do that, John. Thank you. Uh, can you talk about, so we, we've focused a lot on, on the great work you're doing at Community Hope Center, but, um, and just, you, you may have said it and I apologize, but uh, the other partners around the community that, that are helping in this cause, if you can re, re highlight yeah. that. I absolutely will do that. Um, we have some great partners in Osceola Council on Aging, the Salvation Army, um, Help Now, who's doing phenomenal work around domestic violence, and that is an entirely different ball game when it comes to social distancing and um, and being stuck in a home uh, in domestic violence. So we definitely want to support for support Tammy and her team. Uh, just all of our our nonprofits in this community are are really rallying together. We have a every other Monday, Wednesday, Friday call with all of us with emergency management to talk about our response and what we can do to, to better serve our community. And one of the things that I keep reminding all of them and myself, and I would like to remind all of you who are watching is, you know, none of us have a playbook for what it looks like to lead and to serve our community in a pandemic. And so one of the things that I am often reminding all of us is that, um, we have to offer each other some grace. We have to be able to offer ourselves some grace and also know that um, that uh, we're gonna do the best that we can with the tools that we have and the resources that are available to us. And um, and I'm confident in, in my partners um, that uh, and, and us as well, that, that we're gonna do that and we're gonna do it as best that we can and it's gonna be okay. <laughs> uh, and I appreciate it. Another comment came in about the Amazon Smile link. So, uh, Mary, if you're able to post that in or provide it to us so we get it right, uh, we'll, we'll be happy to share that. Um, you know, if we go back to the $600 stimulus at the Feds are, you know, maybe what we what I have learned um, that I can share with the audience is, you know, unemployment is handled at the state level. And so you do have to apply for reemployment assistance. That information is on our resource page. Uh, and as you go through the process, the state will award its uh, contribution, which is up to $275. A lot of the um, uh, uh, strings attached have been cut by the governor to expedite that. Uh, and then once you're approved by the state, the $600 federal contribution comes in addition to that. And then my understanding is, and perhaps for you too, it can be a little confusing, but that $600 is not, is not, um, you get the whole 600 on top of whatever the state gives you and that's on a weekly basis. Can you confirm that? That is my understanding. My understanding is that everyone should apply through the state unemployment. Um, and then that $600 is then um, an additional thing. Um, and, and so it's important for people who may think that in the past they would be denied uh, unemployment because they were an independent contractor or a gig worker, or Uber Lyft driver, those types of things, but they should go ahead and apply. And I think the other thing that we need to let people know um, about applying is that there has been some difficulty in the last couple of weeks with our with with our unemployment process uh, just because the need has been so strong but I know that um, that that 
that that office has been working very hard to up the servers that you can now do a paper application if you'd like and you can take it to any FedEx store and they will ship it back to Tallahassee for free. And so uh, there are multiple options. I know uh, when we kind of chatted yesterday, we talked a little bit about that those unemployment applications would be also be listed on your resource site uh, there at the chamber. So people, if you can't get on online, you can you can simply print those things out and take them to FedEx. Um, and I will also let you know that the Amazon smile link got uh, posted by one of my colleagues, uh, Christy, in the um, in the comments there. So thank you for that, Christy. Yep, thank you, Christy. We posted it as well, so it's the same link, and we encourage you to follow that. Um, you have said this before, but I really think that we it's worth stressing. This is the tough love side of the work that we do. Um, but whether you're on unemployment or you're facing hardship. Um, you know, some of the some of the partners in the community, Kissimmee Utility Authority, Duke Energy, OUC, have uh, suspended um, late fees and uh, interest charges, et cetera. There's no disconnection. Uh, and so um, that's a, a blessing and appreciated by our great partners in the community. Uh, but those bills still need to be paid. And so you don't want to uh, necessarily blow them off, so to speak. So uh, you might share and reiterate to them that you know how to how to properly maybe manage that but but pay as much of those bills as you can as you go along so it doesn't creep up on you when this passes well and i think for utilities uh, make sure to reach out for osceola council on aging and their utility program so if you know that the finances are not going to be available for you to catch those things up uh, go ahead and reach out to them before that number is very large when you get that first pass due kind of bill go ahead and reach out to, to council on aging and they'll let you know kind of their protocol for utility assistance i'm not going to speak to that because i don't that's not my wheelhouse i'll let them take that uh, but i i know that they have that program and that they have availability and i know that toho and kua from what i understand have expanded their benefits in that in that arena to make sure to cover more people uh, again when it comes to evictions just letting reminding people um that um to pay what you can but also let those landlords know and if you are a landlord who's watching this um you own rental properties to check with their mortgage companies about what kind of benefits they can get on the other side um, a lot of mortgage companies are currently offering opportunities for people to defer their payments for up to a year um some of them three months but they're supposed to be looking at a year and in that conversation if if your mortgage company is willing to do that then I would hope that you would then trickle that down to the people living in your rental property so that they could also have the benefit of a of a lower rent payment or, or maybe no payment at all. Um, and so I, it's kind of a twofold. We need to be working together as neighbors. I know that we are businesses and we, and we have businesses to run and we have bills to pay. All of us across the spectrum have that, but we also have the ability to be community and to be neighbors to one another. And if there's opportunities to help your neighbor in this way, I would greatly, greatly encourage that. And to that point, KUA specifically has the Good Neighbor Fund, yes. and uh, they reached out to us uh, this past week to, uh, they give us tremendous support, uh, and we do things in the community together, um, and their support keeps the lights on and helps us continue to serve our members and community. Um, but in, in discussion, you know, uh, it was, uh, can, can we find ways to more, offer more support into their Good Neighbor Fund with the support they give us? So. Um, so that is a great resource is the bottom line. It does help our neighbors in time of need. So certainly if you're a KUA uh, customer, encourage you to reach out to KUA for that information uh, as to how that can help. Um, I, we're getting close to wrapping up here within, uh, you know, the half hour for sure. And so, um, you know, you, I, I led with our mission statement of champions for and through this COVID-19 crisis, we've established another hash that is champions adjust and so that's key it's here in Osceola County uh, and there is no book or playbook when it comes to a pandemic uh, and this isn't an only situation there there's other times we get thrown off course and so um, just want to give you that plug that champions do adjust that uh, another hashtag in this together um, and a final hashtag is we care you know, sometimes business gets viewed as cold, but but here at the chamber and here in your community, business is here to help and we're your neighbors and we're on your side and we will get through this together. So um, I'll turn it over to the Reverend in case she has a message of hope and faith to share and, and uh, to leave you with a, a bright future that's just around the corner. Mary? 
I mean, I appreciate that so much. And I am, I'm always just so blessed to know that uh, I get to serve in Osceola County with such amazing business partners. Uh, you know, I am watching other communities and how they're responding. And, you know, not everybody's thinking about how this is affecting the nonprofits, but we're still essential workers. And so many of us are still on the front lines um, and putting our, our team's uh, health at risk. Uh, so um, I would just say that, you know, as a pastor, like we welcome Welcome your prayers. We all we we should be praying for our community together, um, and and reaching out to whatever faith uh, you may have in this time, and kind of holding on to that. And then also, just um, to remember that uh, we are not alone. That the hashtag you know in this together is really important. It can feel very lonely and isolating in the in these times. And so, um, I would encourage anybody who have who has been feeling that way. I know that I have been feeling that way in some ways. Um, to to reach out to your friends and your family and this community is great. The Hope Center actually, uh, we have a listening line. Uh, if you call into the Hope Center for services and then you say that you just want someone to talk to, um, you can push a button and just have someone to chat with. Uh, we feel like that's really important during this time. Um, one of our strategies is trauma-informed care. And one way that we know about trauma is to remind ourselves that it's happening. And this is trauma and we have to acknowledge it and then move forward from that. And so I wanna remind everybody that it's okay if you're not okay right now, uh, but care for yourself well, reach out for the services that you need. Um, and, and you're not alone. We're in this together. Amen. So we'll end with that. Thanks for watching. Again, we have the resource page at KissimmeeChamber.com and uh, we appreciate you. We're here for you. We're in this together and uh, we'll see you next week. Perhaps uh, we're trying to lock up a mental health official to come yes. kind of, uh, share the same message Mary just shared to help us all through this. Uh, but there is light at the end of the tunnel and we're here for you. Thanks for watching. Thank you. All right.